Hey, I'm Alec, and today I'm going to talk about the different types of end mills you can use for desktop CNC milling. There are many different factors that go into the objects you can create with a CNC mill, with the biggest contributor being your end mills. At their most basic level, they're like drill bits, except instead of being able to drill straight down, they're also able to move horizontally and have different form factors to achieve the cleanest cut possible in specific materials. Some are designed for plastic to generate very little heat, and some are designed for wood to keep down chip out and tear out, and others are designed for ultra fine detail work. With all these different considerations, it would better serve your understanding if I talked about each of these parts individually, so my goal today is to be able to give you all the considerations necessary to lead you down the path to success. Let's jump into it. From one end mill to the next, the most obvious difference you'll find is that end mills come in many shapes and sizes. Some are thin and pointy, and others wide and round. Some of the most common shapes you'll find are fishtail, or flat, ball-nosed, and bull-nosed, and each of these can be a straight cut or a tapered cut. Size is the biggest determination to what you can do with any given end mill. Large ones excel at grinding through a lot of material at once, but they can't achieve a lot of detail work. With CNC milling, the radius of your end mill is going to be the radius of any corner on the internal pockets, so you'll never be able to achieve a perfectly square corner. The smaller and smaller end mills can be used for each pass to clean up an edge and get the part to the final dimension and shape. However, the smaller your end mill gets, the more fragile it becomes. So if you try to use a 1 16th inch end mill to cut through a lot of material, you risk snapping it off into your workpiece. In most cases, the most efficient use of a tool is to cut at around half of the diameter of the tool. With a quarter inch tool, have a maximum depth of about 1 8th of an inch. There are generally two forms of end mills, straight and tapered, and each one is more efficient than the other at certain jobs, so you will want to pick one based on the geometry of your finished part. A tapered end mill has a larger cross-sectional area than a straight end mill of the same tip diameter, which means you have less likely of a chance of bending it or even snapping it off in your workpiece. But a straight end mill is able to achieve perfectly vertical walls, whereas a tapered end mill is much more efficient at making angled walls. Fishtail end mills are generally used to cut simple profiles out of your medium, like letters out of a big piece of wood. They cut best using the side of the mill, so most cutting software will slowly ramp the end mill down into the material rather than a simple plunge. With fishtail end mills, you'll have nice square corners at the bottom of any inset section and smooth flat tops to any sections it passes over. Ball nose end mills have a dome shaped tip. These excel at high detail contours like relief artwork or mold and die making, but have what is known as scalloping. Since this end mill is round, having a perfectly flat top surface is a challenging feat and will take many more passes to do rather than just using a simple fishtail end mill. Bullnose end mills, which are also called corner radius end mills, are like a combination between fishtail and ballnose. They have a flat bottom with some rounded corner, which means that you can have nice filleted inner corners while also avoiding the problem of scalloping. These are commonly used to make molds because you can use them to achieve your flat bottom surfaces while also having nice rounded contours over the top. The tip profile isn't the only thing that differentiates end mills. The spiral channels on an end mill, called flutes, determine which materials you can cut. Generally, less flutes equals better chip clearing at the expense of the surface finish. More flutes gives you a nicer surface finish, but worse chip clearing. The softer and gummier material, the quicker you need to remove chips away from your part. Using a six flute end mill on plastic is gonna melt it more than it's gonna actually cut it. And using that same end mill on aluminum is gonna generate so much heat you run the risk of friction welding aluminum chips to your end mill, ruining both the end mill and your workpiece. The guidelines for soft metals, plastic, and woods is to use one or two flutes. For high detail milling, use three or four flutes, and for carbon fiber, six or more flutes. End mills can be made from a lot of different materials, but high speed steel and tungsten carbide are gonna be your two most common. High speed steel tends to be more forgiving than tungsten carbide because tungsten carbide is brittle and if your machine's not super rigid, it can chatter and shatter if you're not careful. And high speed steel is cheaper, but that comes at the cost of it dulling a lot quicker than carbide. In order to improve tool performance, manufacturers will apply different coatings to extend the life of the tool and to keep it sharp longer. Finding the right end mill for the job is all about finding the balance between the different factors that make up a tool. And don't forget that it's standard procedure with CNC milling to swap out tools in the middle depending on where you are in your process. It's perfectly normal to have dozens of tools that you rotate through in order to get closer and closer to your final shape and finish for your finished product. I hope that this video has gotten you interested in CNC milling or given you a better understanding of what end mills do. Have fun milling. I'm Alec from Matter Hackers. Thanks for watching.
Hey there, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video about end mills and that it got you inspired to learn more about desktop CNC milling. If you want to read some in-depth articles, you can go to matterhackers.com, or if you want to stay up to date on all of our digital manufacturing content, be sure to click subscribe. See you on the next one.